Rags to riches, baby. I hope this fits and I hope this makes a difference. We said we wouldn't do this uh, unless we had been here a few times. All right, if it tastes half as bad as it smells. The chatter on the radio is thunderstorms with gusts of 45, 45. Sunday morning, we are on the hunt for a protected anchorage. We decided to leave Shroud to come down to Cambridge uh, for two things. There's a front coming and we needed internet to upload the video. As you can see, we're already connected to the mooring pennant with those two yellow floats on it. Well, you might be asking, what are we doing connecting more lines? We have an inherent distrust of any mooring system. And so whenever possible, we like to connect separate lines to the swivel or another shackle or something connected to the heavier main chain. You also notice our friend here swimming nearby and doing casual loops coming in for a good look. There were actually three sharks a little earlier a couple of black tip reef sharks, and this one, a medium-sized bull shark. Now, most sharks don't scare us that much, but the bull sharks can be a little more aggressive, shall we say. Anyway, that's why you'll see me carrying a pole spear, just in case. We weren't the only ones anticipating a pretty strong cold front. There goes the neighborhood. <laughs> I think they wanted our spot. Ooh. Now that arrived just about. You probably can't hear me out there. So we'll come on in and cold front has arrived. So yeah, as advertised, this front has been well forecast within three or four hours for five or six days. It's just amazing how far we've come with weather forecasting. Tucked in, nice and safe. We're on a mooring right now as we've been having a little bit of trouble with our anchor windlass. Gonna get that solved with uh, a part that's coming in uh, on air freight here, hopefully not too long. Unfortunately, we ran into some shipping delays and couldn't get the new windlass gypsy in time for the next cold front. And this next one was really packing a punch. So even though we were having some retrieval problems, we decided to get off the mooring ball and go tuck up into a tighter little cove. And we weren't alone. A few other folks had the same idea. Now, up to a certain point, the wind you get with cold fronts is just kind of an annoyance. The wind will clock around and you'll get swells from different directions, a little uncomfortable, kind of noisy. But once the winds get over about 30 or 35 knots, then you start having to worry about your ground tackle and dragging. With this system coming in, the cold front itself would bring us some rain, maybe some pretty strong winds around the thunderstorms, but then an upper level trough was gonna swing through and that would really boost the winds. And with a few more potential thunderstorms rolling through with that trough, the high momentum air in the upper levels could be mixed down to the surface, which would produce some really strong gusts. We're pretty well tucked in here. Good holding. The only ones in front of us are our friends, so I think they'll be careful. So I think we're in good shape. Chatter on the radio is thunderstorm gusts to 45, 45. So, how do you think we'll sleep tonight? 
I think we'll sleep okay tonight. I think it'll be uh, noisy with the wind. Yeah, it's gonna be in the high 20s, low 30s, but yeah, this I windy. Boat wash. We needed that. We have long joked that we are bad buddy boats. You don't want to try and buddy boat with us because we'll get on the radio and say, yeah, I think we're planning on doing this. And then we'll talk for about a minute and a half and go, no, I think we, we want to do something else. We like to change our minds a lot. We just realized that our friends on One Life are the same way. So the question is, do two bad buddy boats actually equal good buddy boats? All right, we gotta do a repair underway on the jib. Come with me. Okay. Come with me to the sea. Let's check it first. Make sure I'm not lying. I'm gonna get back. This is the hardest part. Okay, I got it. Good job. Thank you. Where are we going? We're going over to our friends John and Tina's house for movie night. Can I say house, right? It's a house. It's like the, the Anchorage where we've known more boats than not. It's pretty cool. Most of our friends that we know cruising the Bahamas are here. Driving cleaner going on. Oh, that's what we had uh, talked about is doing like that dinghy drive-in with it. But we need better noise. We need more, <laughs> need more noise to make that happen. Yeah. So, um, anyway. We, yeah, we found it from. <laughs> All right, let's check in before we get started here. Today's task is to switch our chain end for end so that we are uh, using a less used part of the chain on the windlass that's been causing us some troubles. We're going to run the chain out and then take the bitter end, as it's known, the end that's attached to the boat, and put uh, that on the anchor and put the other end, the new bitter end, back through the windlass. Sounds simple enough. We'll see how it goes. You know, you know how things go with these things. <laughs> Estimated time? Estimated time, I'm gonna go, uh, I'm actually gonna be generous with this one and say we run into some sort of problem and it's two and a half hours. Okay, here we go. You see that pitting? So this chain is uh, 10 months old, 10 months of service, and it basically looks like the galvanizing is just, it's just wearing away. So, I mean, it's not dangerous or anything, but this is maybe what you'd expect chain to look like after five years, not, uh, not less than a year. Where's the next piece of this puzzle. Okay. Well, I think we're ahead of schedule. What did I say, two and a half hours? Yeah. Oh, about a half hour in? An hour in? I don't know. Yeah, so we've end for ended the chain, and the chain that hasn't been used much looks okay, and it doesn't seem to be skipping as much on the gypsy. I still think that replacement gypsy is going to make a difference. But uh, now it's all that's left is to attach the anchor to the other end and uh, hoist it up. Actually, hoist it up and then attach the anchor. Yeah. All right, that went really well, and I think a lot faster than he expected. So let's look. 
Just under an hour and a half. Wow. <laughs> what are you gonna do with that extra hour? Oh, I'll probably move on to the next project. <laughs> hey, there's footprints on the deck. Who's up there? Let's go investigate. What is going on here? What's going on here is we've had this progressively worsening problem with the chain skipping and maybe twisting. You know, we always make it work. There's only been a couple critical times. I think one of the issues is that the gypsy, the thing that grabs onto the chain and pulls it in, a gypsy maybe is worn down after 10 years of use or 11 years of, of use. Oh my God, look at that. <gasps> oh, that's gorgeous. So there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> I think that'll help. Oh yeah? Yeah, I think so. Like, I don't think our current one has these little ridges anymore. No, we need more ridges. <laughs> Getting the old one off, that's the first order of business. You ever done this before, doctor? Have I ever done this before? No. Have I ever done most of this before? No. Are you nervous? No, I don't get <laughs> nervous. Since this one has been in service and there are parts holding it in place that have been in service for, well, 10 or 11 years, there's probably some corrosion and I'll be really surprised if things just unbolt easily. Maybe be a little bit harder than that. And how long do you expect this job to take? It should take an hour. I'm gonna bet it takes a week. There's one of them, 29. Somebody, last time they worked on it, used grease on the bolts and that really, really helps. I think it's pretty clear straight away that, uh, well, the shoulders of the gypsy on the old one are, are all worn down. Wow. So you can see why maybe it was slipping in and out. Um, we've got 3 8 inch chain and the new one is marked as 3 8 so it should fit, you know, more or less perfectly. That was fast. Oh yeah, no problem. Yeah, it uh, actually went pretty smoothly. And uh, yeah, we got the new Gypsy on and uh, we'll fire it up, test her out here in a second. Oh, oh, this is, okay. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, okay. Nick, See, this is called green juice. When you can't just go down to the store to get one, you have to make your own. All right, that looks disgusting and it smells disgusting. <laughs> Okay, the spinach was was gone. I had to parse out the good stuff. Okay, is that one of my socks? <laughs> just a couple stalks of celery, one carrot, one lemon, some fresh ginger. <laughs> All right, if it tastes half as bad as it smells, uh, oh, nice. That's not going to stain at all. Look at that. Here's your salad. Oh, that looks so good. Actually, it's really good. Mmm, I'm glad you don't want any of that. More for me. She's trying to use the reverse psychology on me again. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's like chicken soup without the chicken. It's really good. I don't know why you won't even try it. Let's get you on trying it on camera. For you guys. I'll try it for you, not for me. Mmm. It's got the distinct aroma of... Old dishwater. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. a little garden compost. Okay, let us imbibe. It is not bad. You're lying. That is <laughs> horrendous. You can't swear on this channel. We can bleep it out. That is horrible. No, it's not. Is that salt water? Mm. 